Welcome to the virtual Wednesday edition of Getting the Word Out from the Bethel Baptist Church of Pasadena, California, where John T. McCall is our senior pastor. We pray that our Bible study ministry blesses you greatly. Meanwhile, if you'd like to be a blessing to the Bethel Baptist Church ministry financially, you can do it at BethelPasadena.org. Just click on the Giving tab and follow the instructions. Your support of this ministry is greatly appreciated. Our pastor is coming with an anointed word. Again, thanks for joining us here at Bethel Baptist Church of Pasadena. Welcome in uh, to our virtual Wednesday Bible study. Well, Bethel, we did it. 21 days of prayer and fasting. Uh, man, uh, wow, that was some rough patches here and now, but... You know, give yourselves a hand of praise because God is good. Uh, 21 days. Uh, and I want to thank all of you who participated and who hung in there, uh, who played some role uh, in the prayer and the fasting. Man, so now we're just waiting for the manifestation of God, uh, for God to show up. Uh, and I want to thank all of you. Thank all of you uh, for tuning in every morning at 8 a.m. for our morning prayer and 8 p.m. for our evening prayer. Man, it was great. It was great. And I, and I, and I know uh, many of you have asked for us to continue uh, our Zoom prayer time, and please know uh, we're working right now uh, on the schedule. Uh, but today, today is the day that the Lord has made, uh, and we've come through the fast, uh, and I'm going to get right into this Bible study because uh, I need to have some lunch today. Yeah, uh, all right. Uh, I want to continue uh, our Bible study theme on the power of prayer, the power of prayer. Um, and in our past uh, lessons, uh, we've talked about the routine of prayer, uh, the need for getting in and setting uh, a consistent routine of prayer, uh, determining your place of prayer, uh, finding a place in your home. Uh, uh, that's consistent for you that you can use uh, as your place for prayer and then uh, determining your best time for prayer and we said so, some of us uh, morning is not good for you maybe it's afternoon maybe it's evening uh, for me I know it's morning time uh, uh, that's my time to tap into the power of the Lord uh, get your routine now uh, and then we talked about the rhythm of prayer uh, too many of us tire easy and bore easily and become easily distracted uh, while we're praying. Uh, you need to develop your rhythm, uh, uh, get you a rhythm uh, to your prayers. Uh, you know, our foreparents, our ancestors, when they prayed, uh, in, in this context uh, in the church, when the deacons would uh, bow to pray, that, that, that they prayed with a rhythm and then pastors, you know, get your rhythm. Get you a rhythm to your prayer life uh, and begin to talk to God because he has the answer uh, to our prayer. And, and, and we said we said prayer is like a muscle. Uh, prayer doesn't happen automatically. That you've got to develop. You've got to develop your prayer muscles. Uh, you've got to work on that uh, and, and not wait till the crisis comes or, or your back is up against the wall. Uh, because in a crisis, uh, or when life hits, uh, that's not a time to be developing your prayer life. And, and yes, uh, God will hear you anytime you pray, but when the crisis comes and when life happens, you want to already have your prayer life established uh, so you can quickly tune in uh, to God and uh, uh, get power for your journey. Um, and some members have asked me, you know, Pastor, why are you laboring uh, so long in this series? Well, the goal is not to leave anybody behind. Uh, I believe in this season uh, that we're in now that prayer is paramount. Prayer is critical. Uh, and I need every member of the Bethel Church uh, to come alongside of that pastor uh, and join in and engage uh, and develop and strengthen it. You've already got a great prayer life, then just strengthen it uh, by joining in with us and praying uh, through this unique season uh, in the life of the church uh, in America and probably in your own personal lives because we've experienced some things over the past few months that we've never would have thought of. 
never would have imagined. Uh, and I believe it's only going to be through, and we're only going to make it through, uh, through the power of prayer. So on today, for a little while, uh, look with me in 1 Peter uh, chapter 5 and verse 7. Again, 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7. Uh, Pastor Peter tells us to cast all your anxieties. Uh, other versions say cares. Uh, but uh, uh, the NIV version says to cast all of your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Uh, you know, prayer um, is our dependency upon God uh, to sustain us and to meet us right in our need. Uh, right in our situation, right in our circumstances. Um, and, 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 and this series, that, that my assignment is to push you, uh, to encourage you uh, to move from this casual, uh, erratic, uh, and inconsistent uh, style of prayer, uh, uh, to move you to a more disciplined life of prayer, uh, to encourage you uh, uh, to settle it. Uh, um, to, to make it once and for all sure, uh, as a believer in Jesus Christ, uh, to develop a consistent, powerful prayer life. And man, uh, the reward of developing and maintaining uh, your prayer life is just unimaginable. Uh, that the power you will have, the consistency uh, you will have in your life uh, as a believer. Uh, and, and see, Life um, uh, can hit and hit from so many different angles or uh, from ways that you didn't even expect it to happen. Uh, you know, when you're single, then you're questioning, um, um, you know, when life hits, um, why did my boyfriend do that? Why did my girlfriend uh, do that? Um, uh, I didn't know my husband or my wife would bust a move on me like that. Uh, 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 why are my children? Uh, acting uh, this way, uh, or I didn't expect my resources to run out uh, so fast. Uh, when when life happens, man, you know, and, and for those of you who live long enough, uh, you know life will happen. Uh, and 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 sometimes when you get that unexpected phone call or, or, or things go a different way. That sometimes it has a way of throwing even the best believer uh, uh, off their game for a while, uh, you know. But once you come back to your foundation, uh, you really realize that, man, I need to pray uh, because prayer is the foundation uh, that will get you through any situation and any crisis. And, and you know, sometimes uh, when you're going through stuff, you know, people have a way of judging you. Um, and, and, and when life happens, uh, you know, you just get into your secret space, uh, uh, to that place, that space that you designated, uh, and just talk with God. While other people are talking about you, then you're talking to God. Uh, 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 you know, and uh, the text today says you got to cast all of our anxieties upon him because he cares for us. Uh, you know, and... Because now, you know, we're using technology. Uh, I'm, you know, looking at a lot of different platforms. And, and when life happens, a lot of people are turning to Facebook uh, and, and other uh, social platforms. Um, and uh, you hear them, you know, they're writing and talking about their life experiences, uh, of what happened to them and how people let them down, uh, how people broke their heart. Uh, but I want to encourage you today. Uh, don't turn to social media when life happens. Uh, turn it into your prayer life. Uh, uh, don't go to those other social uh, platforms. Begin to pray. Uh, because those folks who are on the platform, uh, you know, they may care for you. They may have a concern for you. Uh, but they can't help you. Uh, they are not the answer to your problems. Uh, and life has a way of causing us to pray. When you've gone through so much heartache, so much disappointment, you tried this and you tried that, then why not try Jesus? Um, and, and I'm encouraging you today who are watching, don't, don't make him the last resort. Uh, uh, don't make him the last thing you do. Uh, uh, begin today, if you haven't already, 
Uh, make him the first thing you do in your life. Uh, talk to him first. Uh, before you go to a friend or a family member or go on social media, why? Because Pastor Peter says, he says, cast all your cares upon him. Why? Because he cares. Um, in our lesson today, uh, Pastor Peter uh, uh, encourages the leadership of the church. Uh, as they're going through crises and difficulties and, 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 and down days to serve with humility, uh, to move pride out of the, out of the way. Uh, and humility is the opposite of prayer. Uh, and, and verse 7 says that we are the cast. Uh, and, and this word cast um, is, the, is the picture of throwing uh, all of your anxieties and your cares upon the Lord. Now today I thought about uh, bringing in one of my fishing poles to, uh, to demonstrate uh, casting. Uh, but it dawned on me that even when you use a pole and you can cast it as far as you can, uh, but once you finish casting it, you still got the pole in your hand and that which is connected to the pole, that string, and you still have a hand on it. Uh, but what Peter is saying in this text, uh, he's saying to really throw it to God, to release it, uh, uh, to get it out of your hands, uh, to get it uh, off of your psyche, out of your mind, uh, uh, to get it out of your possession and literally give it to him. Um, and see, the problem with many of us today, uh, we'll cast it to him, but like with that fishing pole, we'll still hold on to it. Uh, we'll still think about it. And every time it crosses our mind, we'll get anxiety ridden and we'll ponder it. Uh, but Peter says to cast it upon him because he cares. Uh, and what I've learned in life uh, is that sometimes you got to prophesy over yourself. Uh, that, that when I give it to him, when I cast it to him, uh, then I move my prayer to Lord, thank you. Uh, I thank you right now for the blessing. I thank you for the answer. Uh, thank you for the breakthrough. Uh, but I just don't keep that, Lord, please, 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 please. No, at some point when I get the release and in my spirit uh, that he's heard me, I believe he's answered, I've given it to him, I begin to say, Lord, thank you. Uh, thank you for the outcome. Uh, it didn't happen today, but I bless your name for it. And every time it rolled across my mind, I put up a thank you. Uh, and then you'll find yourself forgetting about that anxiety. Whatever that care is, what that worry is, uh, that you'll find yourself gradually not thinking about it. And then when the answer comes, you'll say, oh, yeah, I prayed for that. God has answered my prayer. Peter says to cast all your cares upon him. Uh, why? Because he cares for you. Throw it at him. Throw it to him. He can handle it. Um, you know, um, many times when we cast stuff to our friends and to our family members uh, and we throw it at them, they drop it. Uh, and lo and behold, we're upset uh, with them because they dropped it, couldn't handle it. Um, uh, they're upset because they wanted to help but couldn't help. We upset because we thought they would help and they didn't help. And so we're going through all of these motions with our focus on, on the other people. Uh, but in reality, other people are limited. Um, um, there are some stuff in my life that they weren't designed to catch. They weren't designed to handle. There, there are some problems that are just too big for other folks to handle. And yes, they love me. Uh, uh, they'll walk a mile from me and uh, will go the extra mile for me and love me and are concerned and they care. But there are just some problems that are too big for them to handle. And it wasn't designed for them to handle. And we've got to learn to cast all of our cares upon him. And man, um, um, uh, all that disappointment and heartache and anger and all that failure, it goes out of the window. Uh, when you give it to him because he's a God who never fails. Uh, and perhaps today somebody's listening uh, and you're angry and upset with somebody because you threw them your problem, you cast it on them, and they dropped you. Uh, but they weren't designed to handle that. Uh, and, and, and even if they could, uh, uh, they couldn't have helped you. Uh, that only the Lord can help in certain situations. You know, um, 
and, and, and many times, even in, in marriages, you know, um, I know sometimes I'm guilty of, of casting things on my wife and expecting her to help me through it. And yes, family and friends want to be there to partner with you uh, and, and uh, to pray you through stuff. Uh, but, but it's unfair uh, uh, to put that burden on other people that only the Lord can handle. Only the Lord can work it out. So why put it on somebody else who can't? Even though they want to and they love you and they, they want the best for you, there are just some things they were not designed to work through for you. And then the Lord, some situations, and probably most, he wants you to come to him uh, and stop making other people your crutch. Stop making other people your answers. Because the word says, well, they have no other God before them. And some of us have made other people our God. Uh, and so we want to make God the true living God uh, uh, in our lives. Um, you know, and, and many times, you know, I was reading last night, um, a sister on the Facebook was sharing her disappointment uh, with her boyfriend. Uh, the plan she had made and things didn't work out. Well, I'm like, well, who on social media can help you with that? <laughs> Who's able to answer that for you? Who's able to change the guy for you? Nobody. Uh, and sometimes there are just some things that aren't meant to work out. You give it to God and you wait on him and you trust him uh, to work them out because nobody uh, on that social media platform could help change that young man's mind or could solve that problem for you. Nobody but the Lord. Um, you know, and, and, and so Peter, Peter in this text today encourages the believers, uh, give it to God. Give it to God. Uh, you know, uh, you know. sometimes uh, we tell people our problems, and really they're not excited to hear it, they really want to hear it, don't really want to know it, and they'll tell you, you know, I'll pray for you. And, and I've gotten to the habit now of when people tell me, Pastor, pray for me, wherever I'm at, right in there. Uh, I might say, yeah, all right, okay, no, no, we're going to do it then. If I'm in the mall, I'm in the grocery store, I'm in the fish market, uh, I, wherever I'm at, and you say, Pastor, pray for me, we're going to stop right then, right then and there, and pray. Why? Because you ask for it. You ask for prayer. Uh, and prayer is serious. Prayer is not to be denied or to wait until, no, no, no. And so he says, Peter says, cast all your cares upon him uh, because he cares for you. And it's amazing, the Lord knows us. He knows how to answer us. He knows when to answer us. Uh, uh, he knows what's best for us. Uh, and so stop getting tangled up into other people when they don't respond or don't answer, because many times they're not equipped. They don't have the capacity to do it for you. And, and some of you have so, <laughs> your needs are so great. I mean, you have so many deep wounds and so many deep needs. Uh, that nobody could answer all those things for you. Uh, you need to seek the Lord and to cast those things upon Him. Uh, why? Because He cares. And His care is a different kind of care. Uh, uh, His care never goes away. Uh, His care is just amazing of how He holds us and how He'll carry you through when you can't carry yourself, when you can't see your way out. He'll bring you through it and He'll bless you in the midst of it. Uh, he'll give you peace in the midst of a storm. Man, that song we sing, can't nobody do me like Jesus? Why? Because he's my friend. Uh, why? Because he cares. He cares. Uh, and, and, and so during this, during this season, during this unusual season uh, in America right now, uh, uh, there's no way uh, for any of us to carry it. Uh, all of this in our hearts, in our minds. Uh, we've got to cast our cares, all of our anxieties upon the Lord. Uh, the fear of contracting uh, COVID-19. Yes, we pray. Yes, we wear our face masks. Yes, we maintain social distancing. Yes, we wash our hands. But that still doesn't excuse prayer. Because God is the one protecting us and keeping us from contracting uh, this virus. Uh, and if you have it, uh, God is the one that heals you. Uh, he's the healer of our souls, of our bodies. It's God. And so Pastor Peter says to cast, to throw it. Uh, and somebody said, Pastor, you don't know how heavy mine is. 
or whatever you can do, just get it to him. Get it to him some kind of way because he cares. Can you imagine uh, if other people were able to catch your problems, uh, then you would need the Lord. <laughs> uh, I mean, other people could solve your problems, then you wouldn't need the Lord. Uh, you know, uh, and, and, and so some, some problems are not intended for other people uh, to, to solve. Um, you know, and life is just an amazing. When you look at now, in, um, with the pandemic, um, uh, with the protests, and all the pain uh, across America now, we're at an unusual crossroad uh, right now. Uh, and, and I believe it's going to only be through the power of prayer that we get clear direction uh, on where to go. Uh, I mean, I mean, every day uh, it seems like we wake up to a new crisis. Uh, uh, the positive testing has gone up. The hospitalizations have gone up. Uh, the ICU beds have gone up. You know, and, and you just got to wonder, you know, um, man, what's happening? Uh, all the protests over uh, wearing a, a face mask or not. Uh, I mean, can, can you imagine the silliness? Uh, and the Bible says that, that we don't fight. The fight is not against flesh and blood, uh, but against principalities and powers. And, uh, and, and, and also all of these struggles that we're facing right now. Uh, um, and the weapon of our warfare is not these verbal altercations, uh, not a Smith and Weston, uh, not a knife, not a fist fight, uh, but it's prayer. And, and, and just amazing me right now, uh, and particularly for those who are believers, this is not the time to sleep. This is not the time to just meander around, that this is the time uh, when all of what we've learned, all of our reasons for going to church, all of our reasons for being in Bible study, for reading our Bible, uh, having a relationship with God, this is that season now uh, where the true believer needs to stand up uh, and to pray. Let me ask you right now, uh, how is your prayer life? Come on, come on. Uh, if you had to do an assessment right now uh, of your prayer life, um, uh, where would your assessment fall? Uh, now, all of us need to pray more. Uh, but but where, how is your prayer life right now? Are you developing uh, your prayer muscle? Are you shrinking it? Or are you just haphazard and casual and inconsistent? But that's why we're having this Bible study, uh, to move you uh, as a believer uh, uh, to the next level uh, of prayer and to pray. Uh, and, you know, uh, there are some times when I have to even catch myself, uh, you know, praying, uh, you know, reminding God of how I've served him and how long uh, I've served him and how faithful I've been to him, uh, trying to justify myself before God. Uh, and, and sometimes you have to just ask yourself, uh, when life hits, what do you do when living right doesn't work? Uh, when you're minding your own business, going nine to five, going to your house, loving your wife, uh, raising your kids and honoring God and reading your Bible, uh, what do you do when even living right doesn't work? Well, look at somebody in your house right now and tell them, keep on living right. Uh, uh, because just because uh, God hasn't answered that prayer request now uh, doesn't mean he won't. Uh, and we know as believers, serving the Lord uh, pays off. You know, um, uh, I was watching uh, the other night, I was watching uh, some stuff on social media uh, dealing with police and how they were treating individuals, and I found myself in my spirit uh, getting upset, getting angry behind it, uh, and I, I had to stop watching it and then begin to pray and to remind myself uh, uh, that the Word of God tells us that we can be angry, uh, but sin not. Uh, and so when you pray, and, and the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding your life, uh, um, 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 we understand that God will always take care of us. And, and just because you're living right, doesn't exempt you from life coming your way. Uh, you know, just because you are living right, doing the right thing, doesn't mean trouble won't come your way. Uh, doesn't mean suffering won't come your way. Uh, 
you know, uh, and we've got to, we, we've really now uh, uh, got to, I, I think, hone in to the word uh, that tells us not to get weary in well-doing, uh, because in due season we'll reap uh, if we find not, you know, uh, and, and so this is not a season to give in and to give up, uh, uh, even though many churches, uh, sanctuaries uh, uh, have still closed. Uh, and, and we're trying our best with social media platforms, how to stay connected, that you can't stop serving, you can't stop worshiping, you can't stop praying, you can't stop giving. Now is not the time uh, uh, to resort back to your old way of living. Now is the time to push further into Jesus. And so just because it didn't happen today, uh, you got to keep praying. Um, you got to just keep praying and believing that uh, if it's the will of God, that God has heard your prayer. But then when I pray, what, what, what keeps me focused um, is Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Uh, it says that, for by grace uh, have you been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of work, least any man should boast. Uh, God saved you. God saved me. Uh, because he loved us. Uh, not because of anything special we've done or deserving it uh, or how we live. Uh, it's simply because God loved us. Uh, and, 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 and there are so many people who have a hard time accepting the fact that God simply loves you. He loves you for who you are, where you are, no matter what you've done, uh, God loves you. Uh, and man, and for some people, that is the hardest thing to just rest on. Uh, that we believe we got to do something. We have to earn his favor. Uh, we have to earn his love. Uh, maybe in the world, uh, but not so with God. Uh, when I didn't know him, he still loved me. Uh, and he looked beyond all of my faults and save me anyway, save you anyway. Uh, wasn't that special, you, who you were, of uh, your looks or your works or where you lived or where you worked, how much money you have or the car you drive? God just simply loves us. And a lot of people are uneasy about resting in the fact that there's nothing you have to do to earn it. Just simply receive it. Now, because he loves me, makes me act right. Man, if somebody can love me in spite of me, man, I can't help but do right and act right because he loves me so much. And when I fall, he still loves me. When I'm up, he loves me. When I'm down, why wouldn't you pray to a God like that? Who loves you in spite of, and who has all the answers to life problems, has all of the resources to what we need, uh, and, and right now, right now, in this season, this is not a time for believers to pull away from their foundation, uh, to pull away from the truth uh, and go back to relying on self and what you think and how you feel. This is not a time where we've got to push in and, 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 you know, and, and, you know, this fast, you know, of having to refrain when you're hungry uh, and, and you're used to having a certain meal on a certain day, eating at a certain time. Uh, and to tap it, man, man, listen, this is not the time to withdraw, to retreat. This is the time to make your way in uh, uh, to God uh, and to seek his face uh, and to know he's waiting to hear from you. And he delights uh, in hearing from his children, you know. Uh, and, and, and so God, who is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, the prayer is powerful. Uh, because prayer moves the heart of God. You want God's heart to move toward you and your family? Try praying. You want God's attention directed toward you? Then start praying. Uh, man, pra prayer is power. Uh, and prayer moves the heart of God. Uh, and, and prayer isn't designed to manipulate God. He's not a genie. He's not some maker wish and here I come. Uh, uh, but he knows what we have need of, uh, and yet he delights uh, in hearing our prayer. Uh, on the day of Pentecost, 
uh, with the advent of the Holy Spirit, uh, the promise of what Jesus said, that he, that he would send us a confidant. Uh, and on the day of Pentecost, on, on the arrival uh, of the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost came with power uh, and filled those believers. Uh, and now when we accept Christ as our Savior, uh, the same Holy Spirit is now active in our lives. Uh, and we have access to the power of God. And I believe now in this season, it's time for us to ac access our power source, uh, our prayer life. Uh, and, 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 and to move away uh, uh, from how you've been seeing it. How does God see this? What is God saying about this pandemic? Uh, what is God saying about the protest? What is God saying about uh, the pain? Uh, what is God saying uh, uh, in, in this election season? What is he saying to us? Prayer. Prayer moves the heart of God. Prayer is our power source. Listen, Holy Spirit is our power source, and and uh, um, uh, there is no other power um, that's greater than the Holy Spirit's power. Uh, you know, and and His power uh, doesn't matter where you live, uh, your social economic status, the job you have, or the car you have, uh, or your race. Uh, if you live in the projects, or if you live in Beverly Hills. Uh, 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 that when you get on your knees and call on the name of Jesus, uh, his power is available uh, to save your mother, to save your father, uh, to save your brother from gangs, your sister from crack. Uh, uh, his power is available to hear cancer. Uh, his power is available. And why wouldn't we as believers want to tap into the power of God? The power of prayer. God's power. Same power that was available in yesteryear is available to us today. Uh, in the midst of the pandemic, His power is available. Uh, uh, his power is greater than COVID-19. Uh, his power is greater than racism. Uh, his power is greater than police brutality. That is His power that can change the hearts of men. It's his power uh, that goes on the inside. And, and, and we as believers, uh, we as believers uh, need to develop this consistent prayer life. Uh, you know, my assignment uh, as pastor of the Bethel Church um, is to be chief intercessor for the members of Bethel. Uh, and, and the assignment of the members of Bethel is to come alongside uh, of your pastor now uh, and accept the challenge uh, uh, to grow deeper uh, in your prayer life uh, because we come against COVID-19. Uh, uh, we come against the pain of death and the sickness of racism that, that, that is through uh, the power of prayer. And if one can chase a thousand, and two can chase 10,000. How many can 125 chase? 150 chase. Uh, when we come together and bow on our knees uh, and spend some time in prayer. I'm encouraging you today, uh, members of Bethel and to all of our special guests uh, who may be watching this broadcast today, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, I, I'm encouraging you uh, to elevate your prayer muscle. Uh, uh, develop that consistency in your life. Uh, uh, get your routine of prayer down. Get your place down. Get your time down. Uh, get your rhythm down in your prayer. Uh, don't wait till crisis come. Uh, don't wait till COVID-19 hits your house. And then start your prayer life. Develop your prayer life now. Uh, so, when, so when life comes your way, uh, that you've got a strong spiritual foundation, even though you may stagger, uh, you'll soon get your footing, uh, and, and, and you'll stand tall and declare, can nobody, nobody do me like Jesus. Why? Because he's my friend. Pastor Peter says, cast, throw 
all your cares upon him. Why, preacher? Simply because he cares for you. And there's nobody who cares like Jesus. He cares. He cares. And I know right now all of what's happening, you're wondering where, where is God? He's right here. He's available right now. And he's just simply waiting on you to call on his name. And if you've never knowingly invited him into your life, today is simply a good day to simply ask him to come into your heart right now and to save you and to forgive you of your sins. And then if you've been just casually going through every day, just, just, just casual with life, I pray today is the day where, where you move toward a higher intensity in Him uh, and begin to seek His face uh, and begin to trust Him uh, and to improve and develop your prayer muscle. Uh, if you need the day of salvation and you want to join, the number's on the screen right now. Uh, counselors are waiting for you to call right now, 626-460-9813. Uh, uh, give us a call right now. In fact, just give us a call today and, 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 and tell us what you think about the broadcast, uh, about the Wednesday Bible study. Uh, we show enough love to hear from you, uh, uh, get some feedback from you. And if nothing else, just call and say, Pastor, we're praying for you. Uh, uh, bless you on the day. Uh, stay encouraged. Uh, and we'll see you again, Lord willing, uh, this Sunday morning. Uh, stay blessed. Thanks for joining our Wednesday night virtual service here at Bethel Baptist Church of Pasadena, California. Again, visit our website for giving information and more. It's BethelPasadena.org. On behalf of Pastor John T. McCall, thanks for watching. If you're ever in the Pasadena San Gabriel Valley area, we invite you to come in and visit with us at 1972 North Fair Oaks, Pasadena, California. To order a copy of today's message or for more information, log on to BethelPasadena.org or call the church office at 626-794-3136.